Joining us right now on the line is the Trump campaign spokesperson, Steve Cortez. He's joined us on the show before, and we appreciate him coming on again on Election Day. Steve, thank you for joining us. How are you? Hey, you bet. I'm great. We are, uh, you can understand, probably a little tired, but we're also incredibly enthusiastic here at campaign headquarters. No question. All right. So let, Absolutely. Me, let me challenge you, Steve, with some questions. You don't mind to be challenged. You've been on CNN no. plenty of times. Uh, I want to start out with this chant that we just played in Ohio yesterday at a Trump rally. LeBron James sucks. Now, you can disagree with LeBron and some of the things he said, but LeBron, as you know, Steve, has done wonders and done a lot for the Ohio state of Ohio as far as the economy, opening up that school with kids and, and raising right. a lot of money for charity. Uh, I know that Donald Trump didn't say the chant with the crowd, but do you support some of those Trump supporters screaming out LeBron James sucks? Do you think that's how you get Ohio voters to vote for Trump today? Uh, you know, to answer your question, no, I don't think that's how we're going to win over Ohio voters. I think we're going to get them with our smart policies that work for Ohio. LeBron James is not on the ballot. He's not on any ballot. Um, so, you know, I'm unconcerned with him. And had I been there, I would not have been joining in that chant. Okay. Uh, I'm not a fan of LeBron James, but he's just not relevant here. And I wouldn't be saying he sucks. No, I mean, I would say he's certainly relevant to the economy and a lot of people in Ohio. He's done some good things for a lot of people. But we OK, so we agree on that one. I want to talk to you about the mask situation. I know you've been asked this question before, but it's one of my biggest criticisms of Donald Trump over the last several months. You know where this pandemic is. We haven't rounded the corner. We have just under a thousand people that are dying every day. There's spikes in just about every single state. Why is it that his supporters are not required to wear masks or socially distance? You have thousands and thousands of people that are not practicing social distancing. All the president it needs to do is say, if you're going to come to our rally, you need to wear a mask. Or if you're come to our rally, you have to be six feet apart. Why is he not doing that? Uh, simple answer. We believe in individual choice. Uh, so we recommend masks and they are provided. Uh, and you have to have a temperature check to get into all the rallies that we, that we put on. But we also believe that people can make intelligent assessments of their own risk profile. Uh, and we know that a lot more about this virus than we used to know. We also know that even lockdowns, even masks, do not completely stop the spread of the virus. So therefore, we think that people should make intelligent decisions for themselves about their life. And if they are young and healthy, they're probably going to be a lot more aggressive about their activities than people who are elderly or very infirm. And that just makes sense. Um, so Trump rallies, we think, have been an important way to reconnect with the American people and to make sure that the people are encouraged to get back to normalcy because we cannot live in fear of the virus. We are not going the route of the lockdown states within our country, and we're certainly not going the route of, of other countries, places like U.K. and France, which are just going back into lockdown. All right. Uh, you know, those... Those very countries proved that their lockdowns did not stop the spread of the virus. So, again, we, nothing completely stops the spread of the virus. We have to, no. until we get a vaccine, which we think is imminent, we have to learn to live with the risks and to manage the risks appropriately to take reasonable precautions. Understood, and understood. We think of the Trump rallies that we do, um, and it's up, to, again, it's up to the citizens. Understood. Let me just pull back on what you said a little bit here. I don't think there's one prominent Democrat that has ever said or scientist that if you wear a mask, it 100 percent works. I just wanted to say, say, but we know they do work. They just don't work 100 percent. So uh, I don't I, I agree with you. And I don't think any prominent, respected individual would disagree with that. Uh, I don't think anybody should live in fear. I agree with you. But let me ask you this, then. Let me rephrase the question in a different way. Do you think it's an intelligent assessment by those Donald Trump supporters who I would imagine some of them have kids and some of them have grandparents, to go to a rally, to not wear a mask with thousands of people there, to not practice social distancing, I would imagine you're putting a lot of other people at risk when you go home, when you spend time with family. So my question to you is, those people that are not practicing social distancing, would you, would you define that as an intelligent assessment? Uh, you know, look, I'm not going to question uh, the, the intelligence of the citizens of the United States. What I'll say is this. I think that people who are highly vulnerable to dire effects of the virus, and we now know that is that is the very elderly or the very infirm, those people should uh, should be basically cordoned off from society, which is terrible, by the way. I mean, it's awful, of course, mm -hmm. that people can't hug grandma uh, you know, or, or go to church with grandma. Um, but they need to take rather extreme precautions. For the rest of society, we believe, and the president is strong on this, we believe that it makes sense to get back toward normalcy. And for people who are not, again, statistically vulnerable to the dire effects of the virus, uh, they can make reasonable calculations for their own lives. And by the way, for children, I think that should mean, because we know for kids, uh, that this is actually, this virus, thankfully, is actually less dangerous to them than the regular seasonal flu, children should be resuming completely normal lives in all ways, sports, in-person school, school plays. I mean, everything that kids should be doing, 
uh, they should be doing right now uh, without without uh, taking taking even any significant precautions. Because again, we know it's not vulnerable to yeah. that. We need to we need to guard the vulnerable and let the rest of society, which is a much bigger group, get back to regular life. That's happening smartly in a lot of parts of our country. Unfortunately, it's not unanimous. Uh, some states are much more locked down than others. But I think the the open states, what I call the liberty states, places like Florida, are really an example for the rest of the country of how to get back to a thriving economy. Take reasonable precautions, but uh, but don't let the virus dominate our lives. A perfect segue with Florida there. So Florida, Democrats were up 105,000 at the beginning of the day in registered voters. They're now down 94,000 to Republicans in registered voters. Yeah, I, I believe a, a Trump campaign manager last night made us. I think Bill Stepien made a statement last night that he thought that Trump would win the state by, by 500,000 votes. Biden campaign strategist just came out and said that now Biden still has a chance to win the election without the pathway of Florida. Do you think that the Biden campaign has conceded Florida by making in that statement? You know, I think they basically have. And if you notice, too, they didn't put much effort into Florida in the last couple of weeks of the campaign. So I think they de facto ceded Florida to us. Now, look, we don't want to take anything for granted. Uh, Florida polls are open right now. Right. If anybody happens to be listening in Florida, we, we don't, do not assume we have won. Uh, you know, we, we have to hustle all the way into the finish line to win Florida. Uh, but I do like what's going on there. And, and that, by the way, I think Bill Stepien said that we would win by a half million votes today on game day, not overall. We'd win by a half million. If I remember correctly, I was on that call as well. Um, but regardless, we, we think that we're going to own Election Day really all over the country. The Democrats, when we look at our data, um, the Democrats, uh, they got their high propensity voters to almost completely vote early, whether it was by mail or in-person voting. So we really believe that they have basically exhausted their, their voting pool. They don't have many more voters t- to gain anymore. And given that, we think that game day voting today is going to be absolutely overwhelmingly a Trump vote, which so, means we want a lot of turnout. It, sure. So far, it's only the morning in the east. Uh, yes. But so far, the or I guess we just got in the afternoon. Uh, um, yeah. But so far, uh, the indications are turnout is really strong. And a lot of these polling places today, the game day polling places in Florida and, and Pennsylvania and elsewhere, they're going to be effectively pop-up Trump rallies. They really are because we're going to get such a massive share of election day voting. If you're just joining us for speaking with Steve Cortez, a few more minutes with him. He's the Trump campaign spokesperson. All right, Steve. So let me again, let me try to pull back a little bit on what you just said uh, and and give you some stats here. So you just said you guys want to own the election today throughout the country. How do you explain all these national polls, even including Rasmussen, that says Joe Biden has a lead? You look at the NBC Wall Street Journal poll. Biden has a 10 point lead. You look at the Economist YouGov poll. Biden has a 10 point lead. Now, I understand that the polls four years ago, many of them had Hillary Clinton winning, by not not by these margins. Even you would agree with that. So how can you expect to, quote-unquote, own the election throughout the country when basically all of these respected polls, not your own data in the Trump campaign, but all these nationally well-respected polls throughout the country say that Biden has a substantial lead? Well, I would say this. You know, first, of course, it's not a national election. Right? I mean, we're not the United People of America, we're the United States of America. And so there are 50 elections. And, and we know that most of the states aren't really in play, right? Uh, so there's, there's a relatively small number that are. We only care about the polling in that state. The polling in those states is far tighter than the national polling. Now, most of the public polling, I'll be fair, still has us losing those states, uh, but it has us absolutely within striking distance. Mm-hmm. But I, what I also caution about polling, uh, the closer you get to an election, the less polling matters. And, what, and I mean that for this reason. You know, a poll is an indication of a mental state of mind. You know, what is my opinion at this moment that I'm giving you a, a, an answer on a right, poll? Right, right. But, but voting is an action. It's not a state of mind. Yeah, it's one's speculative. And, and this is where enthusiasm becomes incredibly mm. important, uh, right? And so people who tell you that they're going to vote for Joe Biden, but if they don't follow through on it, if they don't have the enthusiasm and commitment to do so, uh, the poll can be somewhat irrelevant. And then vice versa for the Trump side. You know, I, I do believe one of the reasons that we're owning Election Day is because our voters are so enthusiastic that they literally want to go in person. It's important to them. We certainly have seen this from our internal numbers that a massive preponderance of our of our voters want to go election day. You know, but again, they're action oriented. It's very different. So that's why I, we believe the public polling, even if they're accurately reflecting the opinion, I'm not so sure about that. But even if they are, mm-hmm. it's opinion versus action. And mm-hmm. on action day today, we believe. Like, look, we obviously could be wrong, and I'm obviously insanely biased. Yes. But we believe <laughs> that, that, the, that the numbers. Uh, uh, the numbers <laughs> augur well for us today. Wait, hold on a second. Yeah. Did Steve? Ju- hold on. Did Steve just admit he's insanely biased? We got it. We got to keep I that. I totally respect that. I 100 percent respect that, Steve. So, just Steve, right, r- right now, right now, there are a, there, there are difficulties. There are voting machine difficulties all over the country. It's happening in Pennsylvania. It's happening in Michigan. It's happening in New York. It's happening it, well, in Nevada. As of two hours ago, some stations there. There was a statement that the Nevada election Twitter page made that stations were actually down for technical difficulties. And apparently. 
apparently in some of these different some of these different places, the the workers are asking voters to give them their polls or to give them their votes or their ballots, and then they they're promising they will scan them once the machines are operating. I mean, do you think that what do you think is going on in these places? Yeah, you know, listen, we're concerned about it. Of course, we have a we have a whole election day operation group. I'm not part of that, uh, so I, you know, I'm not at all an expert on actual balloting. Um, but this team is extremely busy. Unfortunately, we'd rather not be busy. Right. That group, you know what I mean? Because that means things are going smoothly. Uh, I know that here at headquarters, they are crazy busy. The phones are ringing like crazy. A lot of activity. So, to, you know, to answer your question, there definitely are problems. Um, I don't know if these are going to be easily rectified problems. I sure hope so. Um, but that also, I will tell you this: in, in a weird sense, I think it's a good sign for us because we are, and I can't put data on this, we don't have hard numbers, but anecdotally, we are hearing all over the place in strong Trump-leaning polling areas that the lines are massive this morning. Yeah, me too. To yep. vote in person. So, Steve? well, you know, we don't want the line to be so long that it dissuades people, but we do like lines because it means sure. that our people are showing up. Steve, we only got about 30 seconds left. Quick question. And again, I don't know what the results are going to be. Nobody knows for sure. We don't have a crystal ball. But if, hypothetically speaking, Donald Trump gets landslided today by Joe Biden, and again, I don't know if that's going to happen or not, will Donald Trump concede tonight and will he leave the White House in an orderly fashion eventually when he needs to? Look, if he would, I'll answer the second part definitively. If if Donald Trump will leave the White House whenever his term is up, right? If, whether that is okay. in just a couple of months or whether that is in four years. Uh, the first part of the question: Look, I don't want to get in front of the president as to when he would concede. So I, you know, I don't have the authority. I'm pretty senior on this campaign, but I don't have the authority to state, yeah. uh, you know, when he would concede. And of course, you'll know my answer is: Well, it's not going to matter because it's not going to happen. All right. So. Well, fair enough. I, I appreciate your honesty, Steve, and appreciate the times you've been on this show and your candor. Thank you so much for coming on and uh good luck i'll wish you good luck uh, good luck and we'll see what happens steve and i know you, you gotta, hey, you gotta thank guys. you thank Appreciate you it. that yeah. is uh, awesome steve thank you that is uh